So here we are in New England the day after. Wow, did we get walloped with 15 inches of snow and um, just in time for a bad back. A bad back comes in, the snowfall comes in. I go down to CVS yesterday and there's a 35 foot pile of snow literally in the driveway. It was unbelievable. So we got walloped I, I, to get my brace. I was getting a back brace so at the CVS. So if you guys have been upholstering, uh, that's a cautionary tale for you. Is, uh, you may want to uh, get a back brace before you get the backache. I, I would advise that very much. So I, I think from now on I'm going to be wearing it all the time. I have to say I was not. I never wore a brace before, but now I think I will. So that's the cautionary tale today. I have three more cautionary tales if I get to it. But um, we're very busy, so I'm going to get right into the uh, Broadway Upholstery School Forum on Facebook and also the YouTube. We've got a lot of things to cover, plus for your questions that you have. There's a lot of excitement going on. If you have a lot of questions, don't, don't hesitate to ask. Jimmy is not in-house, but I think Jimmy might be checking in with us. And we'll see what little tidbits of wisdom Jimmy has if he calls in. Um, so I'm going to get to the first one is Gabriel, and she says um, she has this picture of this mid-century chair here, which is kind of cool looking. I think of Mad Men when I think of mid-century. I don't know if you guys, I, I've never watched the show. I've just seen bits and pieces of it, but the premise is interesting to me. You know, 50s office building with the, with the uh, mid-century furniture. That's what this chair reminds me of. <laughs> Anyhow, um, she says, I have the project that has been sitting for almost a year. I only seem to have the chair photo. You are negative on cardboard. Yes, I am. But she means not cardboard tack tape. She means the cardboard being used elsewhere on the chair. Is there another alternative? And I'm going to answer this question right away. Yes, there is. Everybody, uh, keep your remnants of jobs left over uh, because remnants and a half a layer of cotton for your outsides are the best remedy. For the insides, it's always the BFM webbing, burlap, and cotton or, or a combination cotton foam. So she's asking some good questions. You have to keep it at a minimum with this chair though because that's the whole thing about mid-century, right? You want to keep it minimum. The profile, low profile, right? Uh, this set has arms, she's, she must have two of these, that were built out with cardboard to create a recessed area. You could do the same thing with, with, the tech, with what I just said for the front plate of the arm to insert. The cardboard was damaged. So the problem with cardboard is once it's damaged, once it once it caves in, it doesn't it doesn't come back. So fabric, a nice woven fabric that's properly secured in cotton or dacron, half a layer in on the outsides. When you push in, it will it will come back. So that's the difference between that's why I don't like cardboard. Once it's once it's damaged, that's it. Even if the first day you have it in your house, if you hit up against it, you have a dent forever. Can't, you can't fix it. Um, I stripped it down to the wood frame. I was planning on rebuilding it as it was. Maybe I should only rebuild the front po profile, she says, question mark. Well, unfortunately, she's got to take the outsides off to get at the front profile. Um, the person I got it from is, was from Germany. Uh, do you recognize these springs? I reposted the seat ba base but stalled on the arms. Well, I hope I answered our questions on the odds, but if now, so do you have the springs up, Patrick? Very interesting. Mm. So this is a honeycomb linkage, they call this, honeycomb uh, shaped design. <laughs> and this is pretty interesting. I haven't seen this in a long, long time. So this is an indication that the chair she has is genuine mid-century too. So she should not change these. She should try to, when she, if she's going to reuse them, go to the front part and make sure that all the nails that are holding it in are, are tight. And if you need to replace the nail, go ahead. But as far as the honeycomb linkage, it looks like it's in really good shape. So I would reuse it. Of course, the burlap has to be replaced too. But I would reuse that. So, and then she has, what's this next one, this third one? It's her fabric that she's using, I think. Yeah. Or is this somebody else, Patrick? No, it's no, still Gabriel. Well, there's another she submitted another email as well. Okay, let's read another thing that she has. Also a mid-century, but with the with the zigzag springs. She says, "Here is how I finished the base of the sofa." Let me see what she's doing. Wow, you guys seeing this? What she did? Look at that nice stitch work that she's done there. And I like what she did on the bottom. She ran a border without a piping, because the mid-century is known for very minimum piping, if, if any piping at all. 
but I love what she did. I don't think that was the original design. She can correct me if I'm wrong, but I really like this. You see the chrome legs, you guys? Wow, what a nice job. Uh, she says, here is how I finished the base of the sofa, which sits in my studio. At some point, I have been very, it has been very badly reupholstered in vinyl, but the arms remain the original leather. I am reupholstering in fabric, but want to maintain the mid-century element. What we just talked about that a little bit. It was a challenge to sew straight quilt-like lines. I had to put wax paper between the foam and the and the and the feed dogs. Was there a better way? I think I think she's developed. I have to congratulate her actually because. I don't do this that much. I don't sew my cover to the foam that much. This is what manufacturers did. So I actually have to hand it to Gabrielle, first of all, that she has a machine big enough to do that. Um, that's number one. And I think her waxite paper idea is a great one. It keeps you, keeps you honest. But I, I have no problem with what she did. It looks great. And uh, keep up the good work. How would I have done it? Um, I might have just stitched it and gone over and... and the, the trick to that, there's a little bit of a trick. If you don't have much of a space, you, you pad up your, your seat, right? And you could do the stitch work without going through the foam. And then when you apply the fabric, um, because it's such a small space, you can really crank up the seam, just the seam alone, and staple it. It'll give you the same effect as stitching it. So it's a lot easier. And it only works, though, in small areas like that. Otherwise, you have to stitch it through the foam like she did, as a, as a quilter would. Not many of those people around, by the way. And then she's got some nice diagrams. Do you have that up there, Patrick? Yeah. This is really beautiful. First of all, I want you guys to see that she's got a detachable um, panel, which is always good news, right? That you can upholster separately and then put back. In the cardboard, she's, she's got, um, on this bottom picture, she's got a picture of the cardboard that would be on the outside that looks like the outside um, so she wants to replace that and then she's got the wood frame now she doesn't indicate here if she has I doubt very much if she has cardboard on the inside she probably has if I'm guessing this time frame she probably has burlap and cotton on that and maybe not even any webbing they, they really didn't go out of their way to, to really pad up mid-century furniture folks that's why a lot of times they cave in and you're, and you're coming in as the upholsterer, the custom upholsterer. You need to figure out um, how to get the same look, but upholstering it so that it lasts long and it's sturdier. So you owe that to your customers, right? So I like, I love that. You see these diagrams are very nice diagrams. I love it. Thank you for, for sending those along. Okay, I got a great call yesterday, you guys. I love hearing sometimes from my uh, people. Usually they email me. Um, Kurt, I had a question, and Kurt from New York called me, and um, oh, he was so complimentary, I thought my head was going to get big and I couldn't get out the door, but we were I actually... Like he starts the email off. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's a really good guy, and he's been watching the videos, and I think he really likes uh, working with his hands, and he likes the instruction, which we talked a little bit about that. Uh, Kurt's in, in film, but I won't tell you... Um, it's not Kurt Russell, though, I will say that. It's not spelled that spelled way. Spelled differently. It's like, like J-O-N boy, not J-O-H-N. But Kurt is well-known, you guys. Well-known in the film industry. And he, he was giving me compliments. His email's up now. And uh, his email is up now, Patrick, so I'll read it. Even the way he starts, you guys, is a little embarrassing for me. But I, I think he's sincere. Uh, I know he's sincere. He's a great guy. And I hope he's watching because I want to try to answer some of his questions on the live show. But... He says, um, I am refinishing the wooden framework of my mission chair, and it is going to look beautiful. My cushions are another matter, however. The cushions themselves have no zippers and were made with foam that is now hardened. Uh, actually, what, what's in there is a latex curtain, and latex is the only, it's in, indicative of latex that you have in there when you say it's hardened. So latex, the stages of hard, it will harden and then it will start to turn to powder. And then and then you're in trouble, you have powder all over the place. So you might want to get rid of that as soon as you can. Put it in a bag. They are thin and cheap trailing, especially the bottom cushion. Okay. Um, 
this is really a good question. Underneath the bottom seat cushion, someone has cut a plank to fit the square slotted spaces. But that is not how this thing was originally made. Please look at the attached five photos and you will see there is some sort of weaving support structure underneath the original. Can you construct a piece to fit into place of the current unforgiving plank? Thank you. We will talk more when I reply to this message. So let me just go to the next. I want to make sure I understand what he's saying. Ah, uh, yeah. So unfortunately, they did not save. So what this had in occurred was what we call a drop-in unit in the business. So what that was was a separate frame, other than the frame of the chair, it's a separate frame that's, that upholsterers use, a separate frame with a, with a series of springs, usually three springs on each uh, metal rail, and, also, and then they're, they're just secured by two tacks front and back, and you have three of them probably across, so you have a total of nine springs. It's called a drop-in unit, and that is, that is the original. Unfortunately, they don't have that. So um, we'll talk more about how we can maybe do something else. The problem with the platform is that you're not going to have a very comfortable seat. Unless, you know, this, this way to overcome that, if you're going to reuse this plywood platform, is that you can go to a, you have to go to a thicker cushion, which I don't think you're going to mind, and go to a spring and down cushion. We can order those for you and send them to you. And because originally um, on Morris chairs, although this isn't, I don't think this is a Morris chair because I don't see the whole thing. Um, Morris chairs with that adjustable back and that metal bar, those ones, they were usually, sometimes they had little springs which didn't m make much of a difference on the cushion, but, but they had a springs in the cushion. So that's what you're lacking and that's what you're feeling it needs a little bit of oomph, especially, I think Kurt's a big guy, Patrick. He's not, yeah, he's I mean, not there. I think, I think Kurt's a big guy, so he's going to sit on this and feel like he's sitting on a cement, right? Yeah, yeah. So Kurt needs either to upgrade the cushion, he can reuse what's there, up, and upgrade the cushions, or start. We can do this. I mean, we can build. I have a carpenter that helps me with these projects, these specialized projects. We could build him a drop-in unit, but um, it's very, we'll talk more about that. But So he's got two good options that he can use. Okay, and um, I hope that answers his questions. But he's very, um, Kurt is very ambitious with this project, I think. But I think he could do a good job. I know he can. That's the second chair for Kurt. And then now we're going to go on to if he's, if, and by the way, if it's a live question and answer. You guys have any questions, don't, don't hesitate. I should right? say Jimmy just joined. Well, our, our friend Jimmy joined, and uh, I didn't see him out here shoveling us out, Patrick. And, yeah, what the hell? I, <laughs> I thought Jimmy would be right there with us. I bet he would. If I called him, he would be, you know. But I, I think he might show up with a flamethrower to melt the snow. What do you think, Patrick? Yeah, uh, that'd, that'd be a little bit of a hazard out there. <laughs> <laughs> Man melts Too snow. Quarters, yeah. I can see the headline now. Man melts snow, but burns down building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Hi, Jimmy. Nice to be nice to you to check in. Everybody else says thank you. Oh, okay. I hope that was a good answer. And uh, keep submitting stuff and we'll keep answering it for you. Yeah. Know. We love these in-depth in depth questions. Yeah. So now we have Mia. Mia is, um, she's, would you please ID this chair? Thank you. You know, you know to me, it looks, it, it's a very unusual chair. It was probably custom made. So a lot of times when people ask me this, they've already done the research and they haven't been able to find out uh, what it is. So the, here's, the, here's the thing, you guys. But people forget this, that years ago, um, you know, people used to custom make furniture, a, a wood, an upholsterer and a woodworker, or if they were both one person, would go to a house and show uh, uh, people the catalogs of countless designs, countless designs. And the, and the lady of the house usually, would pick out the design that she wanted, especially around the dining room table. And this is a dining room chair. She would select the design she wanted. And some of them were pretty unique. Some of them were custom made by the people that were doing the chairs. So therefore, it's almost impossible to classify some of this furniture. This falls under that. Because I've never seen, it's beautiful. Um, 
it's a beautiful design. I've never seen that in a dining room chair. But they're definitely dining room chairs. I'd say they're about 60, 70 years old, and they were probably custom made. So you've got a very nice piece of furniture there. Uh, some people might call this an oval back dining room chair, for instance. An ornate oval back dining room chair. It's kind of like a generalization, isn't it? Um, but it's a, definitely worth doing. I wonder if she's got more than one. See, oftentimes, two antique dealers would break these sets up and try to sell them as ones and twos because they get more money. So let's go on to the next one. So we, we were going to run a class, an online class yesterday, you guys, but um, you know we, we had to cancel that as well. So Jimmy Jimmy's probably going to have to wait um, till the new year, right, Patrick? Or? Well, no, we're going to try to figure something yeah, out. Yeah, maybe. We, we don't want to wait that long. Yeah. No, maybe. Yeah, we should. All right, so now we are off to the YouTube. Um, uh, Pam has a question. Pam? Pam says, I'm looking for a good used Juki sewing machine. Do you have any recommendations for where to purchase? Also, can you remind me of the model you use, please? Well, the model that I use, I have to look back at it, yet, is the DDL555ON. And that is a student model. I, I love that machine. So Juki actually is known for their machinery, that they are teaching machinery uh, machines, um, and and they're known for their simplicity. And what that means is they don't break down a lot. You guys, the, the more complex you are, you are you know, there's, there's computerized sewing machines out there. I know that. But the more complex your machine is, the more attachments you have, the more needles that you're changing out. You know the more likely you're going to have problems with your machine. So I highly recommend the Juki. Um, I highly recommend for beginners the, this model that I have uh, because um, the thing that makes this special too is that the, it's a self-oiling machine. It's internally, internally it's oiling itself so no oil leaves the machine like, like this old sink is. You'd have, to, you'd have three spots at least to oil up problem with that is you have oil with fabric that's not usually a good mix so this machine is unbelievable it's self-oiling you don't have to worry about the oil and it's it's a very heavy he I call it a heavy-duty machine because it, it does it does a lot of what I want it to do for me anyhow now if you're if you're doing more leather work and things like that you need a bigger machine you need a walking foot machine and that's usually when you develop a good skill, a good sewing skill, when you when you upgrade to something like that. So, is there another question, Michaela? Uh, no. Okay. So let's get to the YouTube. Um, Terry, uh, she says on the Sheridan. We just did this, the Sheridan sofa, sofa cuts, showing tips and techniques. And she says wonderful explanation. Sometimes you just need to see it done. Thanks, Kevin and Patrick. You know, I have to say, Pat, Patrick, you don't get much credit, uh, but I'm glad she's given you some credit. I, I sometimes forget myself, but I was talking to somebody. Yes, I appreciate that, Terry. She's actually in the, in the Q&A right now. So yeah, you. I mean, Pat, behind the scenes, hey, you guys, you know, people say that, that this is hard to do, what I'm doing right now. I don't find it that hard. I mean, I'm not a professional anything, really, because I'm a professional upholsterer. But uh, Patrick's uh, IT skills and his thumbnailing and his YouTube work and his forum work and his editing, editing, forget about it. You wouldn't believe well, it. Yeah, Michaela did a lot of that. And, and Michaela, both of them together. There's no way I could have done this on my own. I would be here burning the min midnight oil until 12 o'clock. And by the way, I was watching Star. I'm a Trekkie fan. Oh, jeez. I, I, I just... Well, one of the the engineer, the old I this was one of the older uh, Star Trek. He said um, that there was a problem in the engine room. Boy, that's unusual in Star Trek, right, guys? But anyhow, he he was um, he 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 knew there was going to be a late night in Data. Now Data's, if you, for those of you who don't know, he's like a he's like a robot, right, or an android. And as he was walking by, the, the engineer says, "We're going to be burning the midnight oil." And Data said something like. I don't think it would be advisable to put carbon on the ship. People would be over carbon. You know, no, uh, totally miss, missing the little anecdotal stuff that it's really, it was funny. Anyhow, so I get, a, I get off track even without Jimmy here. I know, so Jimmy, Jimmy, the poor guy. <laughs> poor Jimmy. We blame him on everything. <laughs> well, he is watching, though. I, 
And maybe that's it, Patrick. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> you know, putting some sort of signal through the computer. Yeah, he's <laughs> distracting me. <laughs> if he has a question, he should ask it now. Oh, there's, like, speaking of um, behind-the-scenes stuff, I, maybe you should talk about that a little bit for the new year. A little tease that we are completely revamping the online school. So Yeah, Patrick has found yet another way of delivering a really good product. I mean, you it's like your technology on your phones, you guys. You're always having to upgrade. It's the same thing. Um, it's what happened was we're pretty, you know, we're just sick of all the, it was very buggy, the thing we had before. So we're really, this is going to be a really, a really good upgrade. No more of those small little funny issues with the other, with the other setup. So did you guys hear that? If you're thinking about subscribing, the new year might be a good time to do that. Um, and weren't you going to extend some? What else are you going to do, Patrick, for our already our subscribers? Oh, they're going to be, everyone who's already pays me moves over to the new system. Yeah. They don't have to worry about that. Right, that's what I saw, yeah. So this is going to make, uh, for people who are new, sometimes people have problems and, and it's going to be a little easier for them to maneuver Much through. Much easier. Okay. But we're, More we're, details coming soon on that. Okay, good. So the second one is the upholstery show live. I love it when people comment on the live shows because it's, it's just it's just fun. She says, "Good teacher, very good." I can't remember what we were talking about last week, Patrick. But I that think wasn't we, even last week. That was a that was a pretty old one. Oh, okay. Well, we were covering a lot. We cover. I think we cover a lot in the show, which is good. Uh, Janine says on the Sheridan sofa. Now the Sheridan got some got some um, uh, views, didn't it, Patrick? Yep, it did really well. So that Sheridan sofa, which is behind me, I don't know if you guys can see the Sheridan sofa, but we did some, uh, it has a very unusual little piece that comes out through the arm and the, and the rail on the, and it's a real pain in the neck. Um, and it's really one of those cuts that you can really make a mistake on. So uh, Kurt and I were talking about that. Kurt said that, that to him is the scariest thing is when you, when you have your fabric, your goods, this happens to be the fabric on this is a silk. It's very expensive. But Kurt was saying that that's to him is the scariest part. He said, I make it look so easy, but I've been doing it a long time, right, Pat? Yeah. But uh, yeah. I appreciate Kurt and, and all of the um, good compliments he gave me. Appreciate that. Thank you. So Janine says, great explanation of those cuts and using a piece of practice material. Is a, is a tool I've used before to ensure I had the cuts right. Thank you. There you go. Um, you can always practice your cuts on a piece of fabric that you don't care about or, you know, a piece of muslin or anything. Even a piece of paper. Some people like to use. That's fine. I'll tell you what you can't use. You can't use... <laughs> you can't think about it and, and write it down what you're going to do. You actually have to do it and then possibly make a mistake and make another mistake until you get it right. I mean, uh, that's what makes people good, is their mistakes. I mean, behind me, I can't tell you the the carnage that was left behind in the, in the furniture, I think. No. <laughs> um, we have a live question here. Okay, we got a live question. This is from Jessica. Hi, Jessica. What alternatives do we have when it comes to French nails? Oh, we have... Um, you have silver plated nails, you have buffalo head nails, they look like buffalo head nickels. You have nails that are shaped like diamonds. Uh, be careful though, here's another cautionary one, tale Patrick. Don't buy decorative nails at any craft store, they do not work on upholstery, they'll break. Uh, that goes for uh, even um, upholstery nails in text. This is one of the reasons why we went to an online store because we were hearing back from people who were watching the videos and going out to these places and buying really subgrade, sub sub, that they weren't good material at all, and then having this happen. So you have to go with a professional grade decorative tack. That said, so you have, you have French nails that come in three sizes, a small, a medium, and a large. The large ones we use in Spanish chairs a lot. Um, and French natural nails are the universal nail. They, they, they seem to blend in with everything else. But she's asking about alternatives. So if I had to guess, I, I mentioned the buffalo head. I mentioned the silver. I mean, there's a cat's eye. A cat's eye. Oh, that's a good one, Patrick, for, the, for our, our cat friends, Patrick. Yeah, make a video on uh, we, should, we should make a chair that's absolutely 
not cat proof, but the other way around. Uh, cat, yeah, uh, cat made out of like paper or something. No, I'll tell you, I got an idea. We'll we'll go with. Uh, here's what we'll do. We'll we'll have a little chair about this high because you know they they want to get at it, right? We'll upholster it in cruel work. We're talking about cruel work. It's the probably the the worst fabric you can pick is cruel work. That's C R E W E L, right? Cruel work. And then we'll put those little cat eye nails all the way around it. <laughs> kind of lower the kitty in, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. At that point, it would just be a scratching post. Well, that's, that's the idea. <laughs> oh, Actually, I did have that idea once. Well, anyhow, that's another story for another time. So, Crystal is commenting now on the applying the trim to the French chairs. She said, great tips. Now, you wouldn't think... That using a hot glue gun and putting trim on a chair, there would be many tips involved in that. But I, as I recall, Patrick, we had a few of them on that one. Yeah. Patrick asked me how long it was going to be. And I said, I don't see it going more than five minutes. It ended how, up being 20 minutes. It ended up being 20 minutes long. So you see, guys, that is another reason why these online classes, for you guys that have already joined, thank you for that. For you guys who haven't, um, you would see so many of these tips within, I mean, there's got to be 20 tips in one show, Patrick, every every show, yep. something like that. And it's all because of The Apprentice, not me. They're asking the right questions like you guys do here. So we got another question, how to upholster 1860s part five chair measuring and applying fabric. There's um, a weekly uh, comment on that video. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the thumbnail, Patrick. I really do. You got a really cool thumbnail on that. You guys should check it out if you don't haven't seen it. Gina said, I'm so happy I found your channel exclamation point used in the three exclamation points, Patrick. No. Wow. Is that a proper That's use? Appropriate, yeah. Is that I'd say it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Another explanation. no, I'm just kidding. For sharing your wisdom. Another explanation. No. <laughs> We like Seinfeld. We talk a lot about some of the things we see in Seinfeld. And that was a show on Seinfeld, like we mentioned last week. I have done some up very simple, small upholstery jobs in the past, but nothing in capital letters like the restoration of the two 1800s Edwardian chairs I'm going to attempt. I was scared, but I feel way more confident and excited about them now. Subscribe, and we'll be watching closely. Thank you, Gina. I uh, really appreciate that. She, she's doing all the right things, Patrick, except yeah. joining the online class. <laughs> That's fine, though. <laughs> it is fine. I love the YouTube channel. And, you know, the YouTube, I said it before, I'll say it again. I, I really wasn't devising the YouTube channel to make really good upholsters out of people. I didn't think it was possible. But it is. People say they, there's so many of them up there now, Patrick, where mm. if you, you guys, most people are computer, sa computer savvy and they're good at researching now. And if you, if you combine all of the information, I think you're going to find it on, you're not going to find it on one video on YouTube. I think um, we've heard from people, I've heard, I'd say a half dozen people, Patrick, yeah. who say they have a upholstering now because of the YouTube channel. Yep. Isn't that amazing? That's really cool. And you know, a lot of them, uh, they've seen every video, which is crazy. <laughs> I think that's great. That's yeah, a lot of hours of viewing. Yeah. Okay, so the next one's live upholstery. We're not sure which what show this was from. I think it was from the last... No, that was a while back. That's Denise. Yep. Denise is saying, would love to see a class on reupholstering a channel back chair. Patrick... That uh, reminds me of uh, uh, John's chair, remember, from the, from, from I think the what live we, class? What we need to do is get us is teach that on an online class. Yeah. It's worth... Does John come in, remember John? Yeah, we should, we should. We should, we should write that down. Denise... Yeah, he did a good job on that, remember? He did. Yeah. did. That was somebody that was in a live class that we had. In person. And that was, that seems so long ago, Patrick. What was that? It was almost Patrick? a year ago. Almost a year. What January, a shame. You know, what just a crazy shame. to think about. This year is like it never happened. I know. <laughs> We're very saddened about that fact that we are... And, and then I start thinking, you guys, about... All of the adult classes across across this country and probably across the world, where people, adults over 18, would come to a class, whether it be English as a second language or upholstery or refinishing, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it's just one of those en enhancements in life and one of those social engagements that they, they wouldn't have otherwise. And how they're not 
you know, it's sad that they're, they're not running. They will run again. But, Patrick, I think the YouTube channel has really filled in for a lot of people in this regard, isn't it? Yeah, it has. I think that we really made a connection. When I talked to Kurt yesterday. Again, I mentioned him because he's really made a connection with us through the medium. Isn't that unbelievable? That's yeah, pretty cool. So, thank goodness that we had this in place. Um, you know, you wonder what they did in the 1918 pandemic. If you think you're isolated today, what about back then, Patrick? Yeah. Talk about isolated. The only thing they had, if you're lucky, not many people had telephones even. And, you know, once you're in your house, you're in your house, you're alone oftentimes. So, at least we got technology, Patrick, to keep us connected, right? Of course, and it doesn't mean to say we're not going to do those live ones again. Oh, no, I'm, I'm really wanting to. Uh, so, Jason, now, uh, he, he's commenting on how to fix an East Lake chair. He said, thanks, I just found this one, and I'm going to refinish. That's great. Um, Louise, she says, great on the how to upholster 1860s chair. <laughs> I guess she says, greatly appreciate and learning a lot. Any live questions, you guys, don't don't forget. Deborah's checking in. Hi, guys. Gabriella said, I didn't understand that you worked on other pieces while, while the main project was going on. Add so much more. Which one was that, the online class? Yeah, because we did it. And a few of them, we did that. We got mixed reviews we were, on yeah, that. We're sure about. I mean, maybe we could do a poll or something in the future. The feedback on that. You know? Well, we got mixed reviews. Somebody said that they were watching. All of a sudden, I'm doing something else. The camera, like one frame, yeah. is Jimmy, and then the next frame, I'm I'm doing a slip seat. Yeah. It reminded me of Everyone Loves Raymond. I love that show. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but when Ray taped over their wedding video and their and so they're on their. 10 year anniversary, uh, Deborah is the wife, plays the wife, puts the, puts the tape in, and then, you know, they open up with the ceremony, and all of a sudden, there's a football game. <laughs> Patrick, no. do you hear what I just said? <laughs> it was kind of like that. Maybe put, like right, put a transition in there or something. I think, <laughs> you, right to I, think we, I think we scared them. <laughs> we can't scare We're not in the business of scaring people. That's for the other... The other well, if people like that, maybe we could do it a little more segmented so it's more obvious, you know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But we stopped doing that. Yeah. Didn't yeah. we? Yeah. I just thought it was too much. It took away. It was a lot. And it took away people. It, as it turns out, people want to look at Jimmy, huh? Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Jimmy, Jimmy's taking all the uh, spotlight away from you and I, Patrick. Oh, the heck. So he's getting all this fan mail. You wouldn't believe the fan mail we're getting from that guy. Um, Deborah says, we're wondering if you could do a YouTube video on proper ways to stuff around coil springs. I'll put that up on the board right now. What is it? Say again, that can you read that one back? Say that again? Yeah. Uh, come on. Deborah. Was wondering if you could do a YouTube on proper was to stuff around ways. Ways to stuff around coil springs. Well, there's you don't stuff around coil springs. The only time you stuff anything in a coil spring, and listen carefully, guys, only when metal is hitting metal. And if you're refurbishing a chair that has that drop-in unit I was talking about, because the spring's attached to metal, you want to take a ball of cotton and put the ball of cotton at the very bottom of the spring so that when people sit down, they don't have that clicking noise. Because you could be the best upholsterer in the world and you did a great job on the top and there's nothing functional or wrong with the piece. If it makes that clicking noise, that's associated with the poor job. So it's the only time you, if you do not stuff a cushion, actually it's bad to, to stuff anything in a, in a spring because it doesn't, you won't let it do its job of recoil, recoil, coil, recoil. That's the whole thing. That's what gives you the comfort. So if you're stuffing the springs, you might as well be putting foam in the in the seat instead of an eight-way tie coil spring. So you may have seen somebody do it. You may have seen me even on one of the videos, I'm not sure, take a ball of cotton. That's it. And that's only to take noise away. That, that's the only way you do that. It's a good question. Though. We always get these good questions, Patrick. Yeah. And, and you know, um, you learn from your mistakes. And I think one of the good things I like about the YouTube channel, like I think Kurt, Kurt very very intuitive Patrick he said well you could play it over and over again and 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 watch and be a better upholsterer that way and avoid the mistakes like that's what that's the point he was making 
Mm -hmm. So the replay button, I mean, you know, growing up, Patrick, you don't know this, but you watched live TV and that was it. Live TV, there were no such things as reruns even. They, they had the live program and once it was over, I mean, this is early television. I Kurt probably knows about this. Once it was over, that's it. It's gone. They right. throw it away. <laughs> they, they throw the film away. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that, um, he was a historian and he was working at Channel 4 four doing something and he saw this big pallet this was like in the late 60s or early 70s huge pallet of film being taken out the back door to be dumped and he says excuse me what's this he says oh this is all old Kennedy stuff I'm gonna get rid of it huh. all Kennedy stuff Patrick he kept it right he said can I have it and he he kept it and he rescued that film and he donated to the Kennedy library and and I think that a lot of the films that you see now are those films that he rescued. Isn't that something? You wonder how much has been thrown away. But, but so the, the YouTube, you always have the videos, especially the online classes, right, Patrick? Yep, those things. You own them. Nobody else is looking at them. That probably, if you're upholstering and you want to get an edge, that's the edge right there. I guess, I guess for somebody that's just doing a one chair, two chair, the YouTube channel is fine. But for somebody that wants to just advance their uh, career a little bit more, that would be great. But... That's the nice thing about YouTube and the online classes, you have them all forever, right Pat? Yep. And I just want to follow up, so Deborah followed up, she said, after the burlaps over the springs, said sorry she asked it wrong. Oh, say, say that again? After the burlap is over the springs. Okay, she has to tell me if it's a, a cushion on the top of the springs or if it's an upholstered, if it's an upholstered seat, because that there's a difference there, so I, we'll... Okay, I got a follow up too from uh, Gabrielle, she said... Pat, I got it. Okay. She says, do you get a lot of complaints about cushions being too heavy with cotton? I have had a few that were like rocks, even if they have springs. Yeah, cushioning is one of the most challenging things an upholsterer is going to recommend or talk to their client about. So sometimes what the conversation I have with the client is, are you happy with the way this sits? If they say yes, don't touch anything. Don't. Why look for trouble? If they say no, um, the cushions aren't what they used to be, and then you try to determine from the customer what they want. It's a conversation. And then from there, um, you know, it gets a little, little complicated, you know, because body weight and shape has a lot to do with how somebody's comfortable on a piece of furniture. Some people do like very firm, some people like soft, but it usually is determined by weight, how much they weigh. Um, really, so, you know, if I can be honest, brutally honest, it is, it is body shape and weight. So think about it. In the old days, they used to have these little settees and grandmother rockers. That's a better example, a grandmother rocker. It's, you know, you don't want your brother-in-law from Toledo coming in and uh, with this, with this uh, you know, big Subway sandwich, right, Pat? <laughs> <Right. laughs> Sitting on a grandmother rocker. Yeah. I have to tell you something. It's Murphy's Law. If you have... A lazy boy, you have a big piece of manufactured furniture, you have all kinds of furniture, and you have that little grandmother rock guy, guess, guess where the big guy goes every time? Patrick. I had a customer who actually used to have to hide her little antique chair every time her friend came over. That's pretty funny. <laughs> because she would be calling me every time to fix it. <laughs> so cushioning is really, a, it's, a, it's a case, it's, a, it's one person to another. You really have to kind of weed out it's almost like selling fabric to somebody you have to weed out the colors that they want the design that they want cushioning is similar so we've done we have done uh, videos on cushioning right patrick yeah i think one of our early ones where patrick you made me remember that one you all the cushions fell on me <laughs> i don't know if we ever put that in there oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we might have well, well you know Somebody you can't comment like they said do more funny stuff like that I wonder how many people really want the funny stuff, though. And they, some people just want to get down to business, too, Patrick, right? Yeah, that's true. Speaking good, of which. Good balance of both. Well, yeah, Patrick had it set up. He had, I, I, we, you should put it up. We had like, oh, I don't know, about 13 cushions piled up high on this table. Patrick had a little tab, a fabric tab. And he said, Dad, pull that when you're, when you're done. I pulled it and all the cushions fell. You believe that? <laughs> that was fun, though. Um, so Denise uh, is commenting again on um, 
the, the live upholstery show. We'd love to see a class. Oh, oh I just read that yeah. on upholstery. Uh, the uh, and then um, the how to fix an East Lake. At, at, I got that one too. And the 1860s. Like on Christina. I'm on Christina. Yeah. Uh, she says I rock. <laughs> I think of, what do you think about that, Patrick? That was a good one. Do you know, Patrick? She's she's. Do you know that there was a a rock group called the Upholsterers? Did oh, you? there is. That was the Jack uh, Jack White. You know who it was? Yeah, I, I just want to show you that. Do you believe that, you guys? They were called the Upholsterers. From the White Stripes. What was it? The White, white Stripes. Yeah. Were they any good? Uh, they were. They were. They didn't do much. That was before he was in the White Stripes. <laughs> that, that's it, funny. Yeah, but it's, it's still, still some, something famous, you know. Yeah, that's funny. Sorry, you guys. I'm not so much of a, a live question. Okay. A live question. Yeah. Another one. Um, this is from Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Could you please tell me how to correctly measure and fit the zigzag spring to the frame? I mean, what, what should be the length of the spring in relation to the width of the frame? Equal, longer, shorter? Um, usually they're cut just a little shorter. Now, I don't do a lot of these zigzag springs. I don't like them. Given the choice, I like the coil springs. If you can't use coil springs, you're better off doing webbing on top of the frame instead of using those coil spr the zigzag springs. But as I recall, the guys used to cut those just a little short so that they, they should be hard to put on. Okay, they, they even have a machine, some type of machine that pulls them. So they shouldn't be on there loose. They shouldn't be even. They should be a little short. I, if, I, if I have to remember, I think it's about an inch. If anybody out there is using them all the time, you can, you can correct me, but it's, I think, about an inch shorter remember too they have that little that little crown shape to them when they come in the roll so you have to stretch it out to to get your mark but the reason i don't like them is because you're putting about 20 of these on a sofa with tension each one has tension if i had to guess i'm guessing they maybe have 50 pounds of compression each so you times that by 10 that's 500 pounds of compression you know that are forcing that front rail so have you ever seen furniture um, that the front rail is tilted and the legs, are, the legs look like they're bent back at an angle? That's because of the zigzag springs. That's why I don't, it doesn't, so bottom line, it doesn't distribute the, the, the weight properly. It's putting all the pressure on the front rail and it breaks really short and quick. And you know, they're not that much more comfortable than webbing and, and a little foam, you know. So is there another question, Michaela? Before I go on. Uh, no. Okay, so again, applying trim to the French chair. Thank you, Kevin. Very helpful. That was from Tony. And now Janine, um, she has some good insight here. The, the, the upholstery show live. Tips, projects, tools, and more. She says, I hope your back feels better soon, Kevin. Feel a little better today. Thanks, Janine. Another great question and answer. Quite humorous, too. Was Jimmy in the last show, Patrick? Yeah, he was. Oh, that's probably why it was funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy kind of brings out the, the funny in me sometimes. I'm very excited to see the next online course of Jimmy's sofas. I have four larger, four, I have a larger four-seater and two chairs with arms that really curve. They're called French Antique. That I've been too unsure of to proceed. I cannot think of a fabric, despite racking my brain, that wears poorly as that wears poorly is almost like rice paper starting with the C and ending with the L, the cruel. <laughs> that usually has a white background on flowers. <laughs> I'm dying to know what it is. Oh, you know what? We never gave the answer, Patrick. <laughs> we never gave the answer. I think we were teasing Jimmy saying it starts with the C and ends with an L. And, <laughs> and I mentioned it before. It's cruel work, you guys. Cruel work. C-R-E-W-E-L. And um, it's a beautiful fabric, but it doesn't last. Probably should use be more used as a wall hanging than anything else. But so the last one, Janine says, "Great tips as always, Kevin. Thank you." And uh, that finishes up through this. But I did want to uh, any live questions, you guys. Don't be afraid to ask. I did want to go talk. Says thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the. Um, 
more cautionary tales in upholstery. And I may have mentioned this before, but uh, I'm going to say it again because it's funny. Over the years, some things have happened that have really been truly funny. Um, so I did a set of six dining room chairs for a woman. Um, it was beautiful. It had a diamond uh, pattern to it, like the old diamond, horsehair diamond, only this was white. So it's, it's kind of cool. It looked like the old horsehair diamond was always black. So this was white. And it was really cool. So she had six of these dining room chairs. They were upholstered chairs, and they were round on the back. They were really hard to do, which, which really, when you, when you hear the rest of the story, it's, it's tragedy. <clears throat> so in the beginning of my career, this is the mistake that I make that I hope you guys don't. So the chairs came in. I refurbished them. I re she wanted to reuse the horse hair. And um, a brand new product had come out on the market, and it was called Bonded Dacron, right? So normally what we would put over the horsehair would be cotton, and that is what you put over horsehair, period. Don't forget that. So I used this uh, muslin, which is fine, and then I used the bonded Dacron over that and upholstered them. They looked beautiful. I brought them back to the house. And a couple of weeks later, I used to run uh, the customer service for this particular shop years ago, many years ago, <coughs> and when I first started. And um, she said, Kevin... My chairs are growing here. I said, "What?" That's one. I think that's one of our blog posts. I said, "I, I don't." I thought she was losing her mind. I said, "That's impossible. Chairs don't grow here." She said, "Well, I need you to come out because all six chairs are growing here." <laughs> so I said, "Wow." I said, I'll, "I have to go out of the humor, you know. It, it must be maybe." I said, "Do you have a cat? No. Do you have a dog? No." Do you have, I don't know, you've been cutting hair on the t the No. Because it was, you've been to the salon? No. I said, okay, I'll be out. So I come out. Sure enough, you guys, you wouldn't believe what I saw. My beautiful white diamond, beautiful fabric. There were, there were these hairs, the horse hair coming out. And not just one or two here and there. It looked like a Shia pet. Do you know what a Shia pet is, Patrick? Yeah, I don't know what Kayla does. Cha 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 chia. Do you remember the commercial the chia pet? You 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 get the pet and you you water it and it grows it grows hair. That's yeah, what it looked like. Scooby Doo one, I think. <laughs> so guys, I had to do that job over again. Sick. And this was a huge job. It wasn't easy, but I learned my lesson. I don't want you guys to go through the same thing. So that is the cautionary tale. Do not use bonded Dacron with cotton I mean with the horse hair use cotton instead why is that bonded dacron is porous you hold it up to the light you're gonna see through it and that's why those little hairs work their way through it she was sitting on these cotton is not you hold cotton up you, you don't see through cotton I mean I talk about the triple-a raw cotton that we got in the in the in the rolls that the the horse hair does not have a chance of coming out with that so so I always use that on an upholstered seat okay so my next one, <clears throat> this is kind of a scary one. So um, if there's any young people watching, you might you might want to leave the room. Hopefully, is <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> well, many this is the, a lot of the stuff that happened to me that was off the wall was really in the early days, and and you know these cost money. These mistakes, a lot of money. I'm going to add it up after I'm done to tell you how much money this costs us. In this shop that I was working on, there was this my men, one of my mentors, real nice guy. Um, he he came in the shop one day and, and said, "Look, there's a brand new thing. It's called a shoppy. It was a black shoppy, right?" I said, "Wonderful, because we always use chalk, uh, uh, special upholsterer's chalk when we're marking the outside of the fabric, so we know where to put it, where to put it when the time comes on the chair." So he is having a great old time. Uh, it was the summertime. And he was mocking up all of his cover. So the abbreviations would be something like this. Seat, inside back, inside arms, top border, outside arms, outside back, cushion front, cushion border, welding, you know, <laughs> on and on and on. So uh, it was a beautiful job. It was, I remember it's like a, it was a wing chair. It was beautiful. He did a great job. And I delivered it. Remember, it's hot, right? So again, I'm, I'm sitting in the shop and I get a call. A customer says, Kevin, I'm very upset. I said, what's wrong, Mrs. Smith, let's say. 
that chair that you did, it has backward lettering coming out all over it. Backwards? What are you talking about? I didn't know what she was talking about, Patrick. <laughs> so I had to go out and look at it. And, you know, guys, you wouldn't believe it. I, I so, oh my, you wouldn't believe the mess. Everywhere where my mentor had written in with the Sharpie had permeated through the fabric. Oh and it was backward lettering. <laughs> and this was a time when that, what, what was the show that, um, oh, with Jack Nicholson, uh, that hotel he's in, Patrick. Oh, wow. Remember, here's Johnny. Come on. Shining. Shining. That's a movie. Not the, a show. That's a shining. It was about that time. And you know, that was the big thing. Red rum, red rum, red. Nobody knew what red rum. It took them all the whole movie to figure out what red rum was, Patrick. <laughs> that's murder spelled backwards, right? Right. So that's what I thought when I looked at it. I said, oh my goodness. And my first reaction was I'm scared myself of seeing all the backward lettering. Then I remembered, I remembered Monty, I remembered my, my mentor. And he had done that, and we had to do that job over again. So that's two cautionary tales. So we have one more. Is this one worth? Yeah, this one might be worth mentioning too. So upholsters who are doing residential work are not obliged legally to offer on their reupholstery um, anything fire retardant, believe it or not. Although I do, like the foam cushions and things like that. Um, the fabric, we don't have to. Um, we don't have to, not, unless you're doing commercial work. So I did a custom job, another wing chair uh, for a customer, and I brought it in and she put it next to the fireplace and um, it looked great there. Again, it was during the winter months. And um, so that was fine. I went, it was like a weekend and Monday I get a call. Says, Kevin, I need you to come out to look at the chair. I have a problem with the chair. I said, oh, okay. She wouldn't tell me. She didn't say what the problem was. So I, I said, okay, I, you know, it's my, my job is to make sure everybody's happy. And I went out. So I went up to the beautiful home. And uh, as I was walking up the steps, I saw this pile of, looked like charcoal or a pile of rebel, burnt rebel. I just don't know what it was. So I rang the bell and um, she, she came to the door and she said, well, I have a problem with the chair. I said, okay, I mean, let me look at it. She said, you walked by it. I said, what do you mean? She said, it burnt up. The chair burnt up. I said, what happened? She said, she put it next to the fireplace and an ember came out. And she said she saw a little stain in the cushion in the fabric. She thought it was a stain, but what it actually was, was a working fire. And she went to bed and the, the chair burnt. And luckily for everybody involved, it was only the chair that burnt. The fireman took the chair out and it burnt the rest of the way on the front lawn. So that was terrifying. So I don't think it's a good idea to keep any upholstered furniture next to fireplaces, right, Patrick? If you're gonna do that, make sure that the fireplace is screened in properly because you don't want that to happen to you. So so are there any more live questions, Patrick? Nope. Well, I think that's gonna do it, you guys. Um, I miss Jimmy. Jimmy sometimes can offset some of the downtime on the, on the live show, right, Patrick? Yeah, but uh, that we still went for an hour, so we started. That's good, early. and I think we got a lot of content up front in the beginning. So okay. I'm, I'm, please keep sending us all these. Projects. Yeah, you know, and more I think about it, you guys, that's what keeps the live show going of the of, of the Facebook and the, and the comments on YouTube, and also the questions that you ask while you're watching. So. I'll say goodbye for now, and thanks for tuning in, and, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.